So picking up then agenda item number four, we have an application for change of location of a common Vixler license. This is for GZ Bagel Incorporated DBA Tandem Bagel Company transfer from 306 King Street transfer to 228 King Street. And do we have somebody here from Tandem? Yes, Chris Zawaki. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you for your patience this afternoon. Um, congratulations on your move. I've, I've been watching the, the build out happen. That's great. Oh, thank you. We're getting close. Yes, yep. And do you have um, do you have anything specific that you wanna share about this? Let us know. Uh, uh, no. Nope. I, nope, nothing specific. We're just uh, increasing space. So it's a good move for us and we're looking forward to moving over there. Okay. Great. Do the other commissioners have um, any questions for Chris? I do not. No, no questions. All right. Then is there a motion? Uh, yeah, I move to approve the application for change of location of a common victualler license for GZ Bagel Inc. DBA Tandem Bagel Company as detailed in item four on the agenda. I second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? And Jennifer. Yes. Great. Thank you, Chris. Good luck. Great. Thanks a lot. Item number five, we have a public hearing on an application for extension of premises on an annual all alcohol restaurant license for Leap In Limp Out Incorporated DBA Eastside Grill. This is an alteration to include the 900 square foot alleyway contigu contiguous to the licensed premises. Um, I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Talon? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Is there anyone here for public comment on this item? Not yeah. seeing. Yes. Deb is here, and I think her attorney is here. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, I'm here to uh, lead this. Great. Hello. Hello. Um, I'm attorney Joshua Goldstein um, from the law firm Bacon Wilson. Um, I'm here on behalf of Leap In, Leap In, uh, Leap In, Limp Out, Inc. and its manager of record, Deborah Flynn. Um, I'll briefly kind of summarize you what we applied for and kind of what our plans is, and then I'll let Deb, Deborah introduce herself and elaborate a little more on that. So we are currently applying to expand the existing all alcohol license to the alley adjacent um, to the building. Um, it consists of 900 square feet. Um, the plan would to be is to have eight um, 36 inch uh, tables um, with four seats at each table. There will be two serving stations towards the rear of the alleyway and a doorway towards uh, to the restaurant that will allow servers to go um, in and out through that alleyway. Um, and Deborah, I'll let you introduce yourself and kind of elaborate on your plans a bit. I know she's here. Yep, she's she's talking, but we can't hear her. Oh, here she sees that. If not, I can talk, I think. I'll continue. It okay. seems like she's having some issues. <laughs> right. Um, so the alley has actually been um, uh, set up for a numerous years now, and it's been working out well. So we figured it was a make sense to kind of make it permanently part of the license. Um, and it's worked out well, um, it allows more seating during the summertime and, um, we intend, I know our full, we fully intend to take all necessary precautions to ensure that, um, alcohol does not leave the licensed premises. Um, for example, if, um, customers are sitting at the bar and they happen to get a drink and they're waiting to get their seats outside we will make sure servers carry that alcohol outside. So there's no possibility of alcohol leaving the licensed premises. So we've discussed taking um, necessary precautions like that. 
Um, and yep, it's worked out well and she has some great plans. So if, if anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask away. Um, I do have a question. I'm just curious because I, I know that we've approved this seasonally and I don't see that there's been any issue with it. Um, I personally like the idea of formalizing it. Um, I'm curious in say the winter um, when there's not seating out there and someone observing out there, does that mean that technically someone could be served a drink inside and decide to take it out into the alleyway? I, I know it seems maybe like I, a likely scenario. I'm just curious. I, right, right. I mean, I think technically they would be allowed to. I don't think we would, Deborah would necessarily allow it to leave because the customer would have to leave the front door with the beverage to do that. So in that sense, I we would not let uh, anything go out the front door like right. that. Unless, oh, that's a good point. So there's not access except for, I guess. Right, because a server, unless a server brought it outside, but under under those conditions, I don't think that that would be something we'd be uh, welcome to. Okay. Jennifer, do you have any questions? No, no questions. And and I walked by the restaurant today, and I think there were cars parked in the alley, so it wasn't even seen as like an outdoor extension. It sort of there's a utility to it. I think when during the off season. So I right, right, right. All right. Yeah, no, it was a beautiful setup during a recent warm weather month. So it's, it is uh, exciting to extend, have this opportunity to talk about extending it. Right. Um, Helen and Jennifer, do you have other questions or comments before we close the public hearing? No, I don't. No. no Josh, you, okay. Josh, did you have anything else that you wanted to add? No, I know Deborah uh, had some plans that she wanted to say, but apparently yeah. that, and she really she was really excited to uh, talk about it, but I think Any, I covered the gist of it, and okay. I'm sure everyone will be able to see it for their own if approved. So yeah, I see she's unmuted now, but it, we still can't hear her. Yep. Yeah. Okay. No, sorry, Deb. All right, then I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. And Natasha. Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Um, I have no concerns about this particular extension. I think it was a beautiful setup. They've got the beautiful mural on the window, and Deb and her staff are incredibly responsible with their service. I agree. Yeah. Yep. Just... Completely agree. Okay. And is there a motion to approve? Uh, yes, I move to approve the application for extension of premises on an annual all alcohol restaurant license as detailed in item five on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you for coming, Josh, and for speaking. Thanks for so much. I will. Yeah, I'll touch base there because I know she has other, maybe she'll, we can have her call in or something. Okay. Thanks so much. Right, because she's up again. Okay, very good. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Moving on then to agenda item number six, application for transfer of entertainment license from i -Cords, I apologize for mispronouncing that, DBA Familiars, to Lilo Incorporated, DBA Eastside Grill, Summer on Strong Entertainment License. This is Wednesday through Saturday from 5 to 8 p.m. And do we have someone here from Familiars to also talk? No, it, no it's moving from Familiars. So Familiars was um, in okay. charge last year for Summer yeah. on Strong, and now it is Eastside Grill again, as they did it the first yeah. year. Yeah. Um, so the, the there is one change last year there was music on Wednesday Thursday and Sunday is that right Deb Wednesday Thursday and Sunday and now um it's going to be Wednesday through Saturday from five to eight okay and there was a meeting held with the na uh the neighbors on Strong Ave oh wonderful I'm very happy to hear that. Um, 
Can Annie, can you take one of the um, maps that you have on file and just add it to everything as the entertainment map? Just so it's yes. a okay, great. Yes. So it's in line with the new um, entertainment applications. Um, commissioners, questions, thoughts? Nothing to add, nothing to ask. No questions. No, it's a great, 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 great program. Yeah, very excited for it to come back. And then is there a motion on the table? Move to approve the application for a transfer of entertainment licenses detailed on item six on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. Thank you, Deb. Item number seven, public hearing on an application for a transfer of an annual wine and malt restaurant license and an application for a new common victualler license transfer from KNC Chung Incorporated DBA Great Wall Restaurant transfer to PGD Foodie Group Incorporated DBA Great Wall Restaurant. The proposed manager is George Ducharme. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? I move to open the public hearing. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. And do we have somebody here? Yes. Um, you have George Ducharme, okay. uh, who's the proposed manager and owner of the company. And I'm his attorney, Stanley Schlechter. And uh, you should have me there somewhere, I hope. Yep. And um, we're happy to be here with this board this evening. So. Excellent. Well, thank you for coming. And we look forward to hearing about uh, the plans for the restaurant. Okay, so right now at that location, there is a, a restaurant. And uh, essentially it will utilize the same floor plan, a new lease for uh, the premises with the new owner. And um, they will would like to continue to serve alcoholic beverages pursuant to the license that they have now. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they will do business uh, in, the, in the same name. Uh, the menu will change a little bit. Um, um, and um, I think you should have, the committee should have all their documentation information in front of you. Um, and Mr. Ducharme is here to answer any questions that you might have. He's um, got some experience in this type of uh, business. And also his wife, um, Fong, uh, is going to be working the restaurant with him. And she is um, have about 30 years of experience between the Hukilao Lao and the Blue Wall and um, a couple other um, restaurants in the area over the years in service of not only food, but alcoholic beverages and things of that nature. So um, and that's, I think, pretty much where we're at. Um, and I defer to Mr. Ducharme for any other specific questions, but you have the floor plan and I think the floor plan is gonna stay basically the same. Okay. George. Yes, the floor, yes, the floor plan is pretty much gonna stay the same. Oh, Andy, can you unmute him? So I, I did. Looks muted again. Oh, there we go. I think there's some feedback. That's why that was happening. Oh, uh, okay. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. 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 Do you want to? Um, there's a little bit of feedback coming from you, but we'll we'll have a, a quick chat anyways if we can. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to just let us know a little bit about your experience? Uh, my wife is actually the one who has the most experience. Uh, like Stanley said, she's been working in the food industry business for at least thirty years. Uh, right now, she is currently working at the Blue Wall at UMass. Uh, she also works at Tokyo and West Springfield. Uh, she has been working there for at least 10 years. Uh, when the Hukilao was in Chicopee and in East Long Meadow, she was working at both locations, uh, serving alcohol, food, and making sushi, and pretty much everything is to that nature. Helen and Jennifer, do you have thoughts, questions, comments? Was the paperwork complete for this license? 
It was, and you know, I didn't update the um, not having received the certificate of good standing and the certificate of compliance, but I have since received both of those. So I have everything now. Great, thank you. That was my only question. That was my only question as well. So two birds. <laughs> Great minds. Great. And I'm curious, have you had an opportunity to be working in the restaurant already? Uh, we have not taken over the, the business as of yet, no. Okay. Uh, we have been in con constant contact with them. Uh, we do make uh, random uh, visits to the restaurant to see how everything is going. And because we do have some plans to, you know, cleaning up the restaurant and such and getting it, getting fresh and ready to be reopened. Yep. That's great. It's a, it's a neighbor of mine where I live. So you'll, we'll, you'll see us there frequently. <laughs> I'm glad. <laughs> um, do you have anything else that you want to add before we close the public hearing for discussion? Nope. Okay. And the commissioners, are you ready for um, to close the public hearing? Sure, I move to close the public hearing. Second. Jennifer? Yes. Oh, it's okay. Keep going. Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Um, this is exciting. It sounds like there's a wealth of experience working with food and alcohol specifically. Um, and sounds like some positive changes are afoot for the space. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It's exciting. I'm excited for the TLC and yeah, it'll yeah. be a, it's time. Mm -hmm. yep. All right. So uh, I will, uh, I just got to get on the right number here. Um, we'll uh, move to approve the application for a transfer of an annual wine and malts restaurant license and an application for a new common victory law license as detailed in item seven on the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Excellent. Congratulations on your- Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Adventure, Good and we'll see you out there. <laughs> Moving on to agenda item number eight, we have applications for short-term liquor licenses, Building 8 Brewing, 320 Riverside Drive. The event is live music at Bombex. This is a wine and malt license for Friday, April 14th, 2023, 6 to 10 p.m. Sunday, April 16th, 6 to 10 p.m. Saturday, April 22nd, 6 to 10 p.m. And do we have O'Brien here? Yes. Hello, how are you? Good. How are y'all doing? Good. Um, anything different happening for how you're setting up at Bombix? No, uh, we're just doing the, the regular kind of setup in the room right off of the main area and uh, just uh, doing our thing. And the uh, I believe the performance on the um, the 16th that we're doing is a uh, kind of a Ukraine. I think we're benefiting the Ukrainian family. I was asked to do it sort of last minute but the band Fever is going to be playing. They're a great nine-piece cover band, a few local musicians. Uh, one of my children went to preschool with one of the musicians' children, and then also, also uh, Dave Peachy, who is a uh, bass player in the area. Um, Double Dose of Dave, he's in Fever. He's in you know a few other things. He's uh, in that band as well, and they do apparently some really great covers, and it's uh, Hopefully it'll be a great sort of charity event. Um, we're planning on making like a donation at some point after that. Um, but I was kind of asked to do it last minute. And then the other two shows are straight up Bombix, Bombix Productions. And uh, that's about it. Okay. Do Jennifer or Helen have any questions? No. No questions. All right. Yes. And is there a motion? Yeah, I'll move to approve the applications for short-term liquor licenses as detailed on item eight on the agenda. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you, O'Brien. Uh, you're very welcome. Have a good rest of your night. You too. Okay. 
Agenda item number nine, application for a new common Vixler license. This is for Merriam's LLC at 186 Main Street. And uh, we are going to be speaking with Rania Yetz. Yes, Rania Yetz. Rania Yetz, hello, Hi. thank you. How Hi. are you? Good, how are you? Good, we're very excited to see this space um, have some life in it. Thank you. We're excited to be here. Yeah. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about your establishment? Sure. So we are a Moroccan Mediterranean catering company, and we're looking to expand into our first brick and mortar. And we're opening a uh, Moroccan Riyadh courtyard cafe and um, gift shop. Um, and we'll be doing catering as well. Excellent. And do you plan to be open seven days a week? Yes. Okay. And could you tell me what a Riyadh courtyard is? Um, a Riyadh is the Moroccan word for a courtyard. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, so it, it's just kind of like outdoor furniture and a lot of plants to kind of give the feel that you are outside, but you're inside the building. Okay, hmm. great. Um, questions, comments from the commissioners? Sounds great, I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. No, no questions. Thank you. Great. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? No. Oh, no. Great. Well, we're excited to have you for sure. So let's get to the motion. I had to move to approve the application for a new common victualler license as detailed in item nine on the agenda. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great, congratulations. We'll Thank see you, you so open. Much. Thank you so much. Item 10, application for a new common Vixler license for Wild Roots Incorporated DBA Wild Roots Eatery at 306 King Street. Do we have anybody here from Wild Roots? Yes, right here, Luke Erickson. Hello, how are, how you? are you? Good. Thank you for coming. Um, and thank you for coming to do business in Northampton. Of course, That's yeah. Awesome. No, this is uh, this is an exciting endeavor. I'm excited by the opportunity and excited to come to the big city. Nice. <laughs> so, why don't you tell us? So, this this is at the um, Northampton Northampton Athletic Club, correct? Oops, got muted. Oh dear. Is he still here? Yes. Oh, there you are. Oh, there we go. All right. Host. Okay. Okay. Now I'm back. So yeah. yes, it's going in the Northampton Athletic Club, previously Tandem Bagel. Yep. So, um, yeah. So we're we're hoping to open rather soon, uh, as quickly as we can. So we've gotten everything in, and I'm planning to reach out to the health department next week and and get that in order, and and hoping to open by the end of this month, hopefully. Great. And do you plan on having the same menu as you do in Deerfield and Greenfield? Yes, ma'am. Yep. Excellent. Love it. It's a frequent stop. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, that's fun. Um, Helen and Jennifer, any other questions? No, sounds great. No questions. Yes. Awesome. All right. Then how about a motion? Move to approve the application for a new common victualler license uh, for Wild Roots, Inc. DBA Wild Roots Eatery at 306 King Street. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Perfect. Great. Congratulations, Luke. All right. Thank you, guys. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Have a good night. Item 11, we have an application for a short-term liquor license for New Moon Films at 185 North Elm Street for Wednesday, April 19th, 2023 from 8.30 to 10 p.m. at the Community Room at 60 Masonic Street, Suite E. And this is for a wine and malt license. And we have somebody with us. Hi, Julia Mintz here. Great, hello, how are you? Good, good. Do you want to let us know a little bit about what you're up to? Sure. We're having a hometown premiere of a film that we made here in Northampton mm -hmm. that's been kind of traveling around the world and the country. And finally, we're able to show it locally. And then we're going to be having a small 
ish reception um, on Masonic Street uh, with Dimitri there. And uh, it's a fundraiser reception and beer and wine, like yep. after party, after the screening. Nice. And do you have- welcome to check out the film at the Academy on the 19th? Fun. And That's great. Come to the party. <laughs> and do you have um, your, is all the paperwork in order? Yep, everything's been submitted. Okay, super. We're good. Any Maybe. questions for Julia? No questions. No? Okay. No. Just congratulations on the film and it's great yeah. that it's in Northampton. Yeah, yeah, we're pretty excited about it. They're gonna be doing a story, I think, in the Gazette as we get closer and radio shows and stuff. So it's fun. Okay. So right. hang time. Just Congratulations. Yeah. All right, then. Is there a motion? Uh, yes, I move to approve the application for a short term liquor license as detailed on item 11 in the agenda. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. You are all set then, Julia. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Can I sign off the meeting? Yes, you can. All right. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll see you at the theater. Yes. Bye. Thanks. Bye. <laughs> Item number 12. We have an application for a short-term liquor license for the International Language Institute of Massachusetts, May 18th, 2023, from 5 to 9 p.m. This is a fundraiser taking place at Bombix at 130 Pine Street in Florence, and they are seeking an all-alcohol license. So, Do yeah, I don't see Caroline here. Okay. Maybe she'll come back in May, but you said she was away in May, away right? Away in May. Okay. Well, I don't want to keep anybody else, so we'll just put that on ice. Maybe she'll arrive. For now, we'll move on to item 13, application for short-term liquor license for the Northampton Center for the Arts Incorporated, Saturday, April 29th, 2023, from 7.30 to 11. This is for Revelry at 33, a fundraiser at 33 Holly Street, and a wine and malt license is being sought with a fee waiver requested. And Joanna. Oh, I got a, a muter, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. There she is. Hi. Hello. I am, I am worried to hear you say wine and malt because it's supposed to be an all liquor license. Okay. That's nothing to worry about. We can adjust okay. that. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Not a problem. No panic. <laughs> um, when we read the motion, that will be amended. And Annie, do you need anything additional for your paperwork for that? No. Okay. Excellent. Um, you want to just let us know a little bit about your event? Sure. We had this the same event last year. This is the second annual. It's um, indoors at 33 Holly, uh, the flex area and the lobby mezzanine area. Kayla Manzi from the Majestic Saloon is running the bar for us, along with a, a second bartender that she works with. So she's in charge of the bar. We have a good amount of um, alcohol left over from last year's event, but we're going to top that up and she's handling the purchase from Horizon. So we've kind of outsourced this to the pros, but they, they've done this for us. This is the third time now and have done a really great job. That's great. Okay. Any questions or comments? Nope. No, no questions. All right. And a motion. Move to approve the application for a short term liquor license for Northampton Center for the Arts uh, and making clear that it is an all alcohol license. Second. Um, Natasha. Can we just make another amendment about the fee waiver? Oh, yes. Um, um, Along with a fee waiver. Do I start again or do you want <laughs> and, and then the motion? To I include. think that's good. Maybe just the second. Nope. I second the fee waiver. Okay. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. 
Excellent. Thank you. And thank you for your patience. I know you all, everybody's waiting for a long time today. Oh, sure. Thank you so much. All right. Next up, item 14, application for a change of manager on a seasonal wine and malt general on-premise license. This is for Frank Newhall Look Memorial Park Incorporated, DBA Pine Theater, 300 North Main Street in Florence. And the proposed manager is Mark Penny. How are you? How are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Good. Thank you. Good. Um, so you're new to the park? Yeah, I'm in my fourth week, so Excellent. Still, still figuring things out. Welcome. Thank you. Um, do you have experience in previous positions of working with alcohol licenses at a venue or a restaurant? I do not. No, I have lots of uh, you know, managerial experience in the retail grocery industry as a team leader at Whole Foods for the last 11 years. And uh, in so more of a food and managerial experience and you know, worked at bars many years ago in uh, college days too. And so, um, no, this is a new, a new venture for me for sure. And do you expect for the uh, concerts at and other events at the Pine Theater to be using the same staff that have been used in previous Yeah, seasons? a lot of the experienced bar staff will come back. A lot of the folks that uh, bartend at the garden house under that yep. permit community uh, will definitely be coming back. Great. And the uh, DSP shows, you know, that's the main the main uh, vendor at the Pines, as you know, I'm sure the DSP has yep. shows. And um, I think they know that I'm new and they, uh, they're they going to work with us. Uh, and we have meetings with them coming up, so they're going to work with us directly and, and come to the first event to uh, you know, just and see if there's any learning curves to help. Yep. That's great. Um, any questions from Helen or Jennifer? No, not for me. No, no nope. questions. Welcome to the park. Thank yeah. you. I'm excited to be here for sure. Nice. All right, then. I think we're ready for a motion. Move to approve the application for a change of manager on a seasonal wine and malt general on-premise license as detailed in item 14 on the agenda. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Thank you for coming, Mark. Oh, great. Yeah, appreciate the time and get it on so quick. Thank you. Great. All right. Now on to the big ones. Um, item number 15, applications for temporary outdoor dining extensions of premises into public spaces. So the vast majority of these establishments have submitted the same paperwork as last year. So we didn't uh, require that everybody be here this afternoon. I don't know if folks are, um, but we're gonna take this one by one. So if there's somebody here from one of these establishments and you have something to add or share with us, then um, just raise your hand and Annie will unmute you. Does that work, Annie? Yes, that works. Great. So we will take each one at a time. The first one being Abid Asab DBA Amanu Cafe, 23 Main Street. This is for one and a half parking spots for six tables and 24 chairs. So same as last year, right, Annie? Same thing. Yep. Okay. Um, do you want us to do motions one at a time or at the end in bulk? I think they should be one at a time. Uh, well, because some have a cutoff date depending on where they are, right? Some have a cutoff date. Some have to include the sidewalk in between. So I think they should be one, one, one at a time. Okay. It's quite a bit of detail in these motions. Yes. All right. Um, then unless there are any questions or comments from Jennifer or Helen, I think we're ready for a motion. Yes, I move to approve the temporary extension of premises for Amanu Cafe, right? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> yes. As shown on plan on file, the license commission to include a one and a half parking spots with six tables and 24 chairs on Lower Main Street and to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right, moving to the Roost Northampton LLC, One Market Street. This is um, going to entail three benches, three tables, 
three chairs on the sidewalk abutting the restaurant. Same as last year. Same thing. Okay. Do we have a motion? So I move to approve the temporary extension of premises for Roost Northampton LLC as shown on plan on file with the license commission to include three benches along the brick wall outside the bridge street entrance with three tables and three folding chairs to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only through November 15th, 2023. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Ellen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Local Burger Incorporated. Oh, sorry, you need roll call. You just did roll call. All right, Local Burger Incorporated, 16 Main Street. Are you skipping one, maybe? Yeah, you skipped one, time. Did I skip one? Oh, I did. Yep, Think Tank. Thank you. Think Tank Brewers, LLC, DBA Progression Brewing Company, 9 Pearl Street. This is for 11 tables, 54 chairs in the courtyard park area on Railroad, Railroad Ave, and 10 tables, 40 chairs on Pearl Street in parking spots. Same as last year. We have a motion. Uh, yes, I move to approve the temporary extension of premises applications for Think Tank Brewers, LLC, DBA, Progression Brewing Company, as shown on plans on file with the License Commission, to include 10 tables and 40 chairs and parking spots on Pearl Street to include the sidewalk in between, limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only, and the courtyard area of the park adjacent to the back door of the brewery on Railroad Avenue to include 11 tables and 54 chairs through November 15th, 2023. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Great. Local Burger Incorporated, 16 Main Street. This is for two and a half parking spots on Strong Avenue with nine tables and a total of 32 chairs. Same as last year, it looks like. Same as last year. All right, I will move to approve the temporary extension of premises for Local Burger Inc. as shown on plan on file with the License Commission to include nine tables and 32 chairs and two and a half parking spots on Strong Ave and to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. Next up is Zingara Limited, DBA Packards at 14 Masonic Street. This is 396 square feet and two parking spots directly in front of Packards. Same as last year. I uh, move to approve the temporary extension of premises for Zingara Limited as shown on plan on the plan on file with the license commission to include two parking spaces on Masonic Street totaling 396 square feet to include the sidewalk in between, limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Next, we have more Hospitality Incorporated, DBA, The Dirty Truth at 29 Main Street. This is for six picnic tables and two round metal tables in one and a half parking spots. Same as last year. Same thing. <laughs> Move to approve the temporary extension of premises for more Hospitality Inc. DBA, The Dirty Truth as shown on plan on file with the License Commission to include one and a half parking spots on Lower Main Street with six tables and two round tables and to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Uh, Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Veracruz Foods, DB, Veracruz Foods Incorporated, DBA La Veracruzana at 31 Main Street. One and a half parking spaces cordoned off with the Jersey barriers, same as last year. Great. Okay. Uh, make a motion to approve the temporary extension of premises for Veracruz Foods Inc. DBA La Veracruzana as shown on plan on file with the license commission to include one and a half parking spots on Lower Main Street on Main Street. On Lower Main Street. 
right? <laughs> um, or on Main Street? On Lower Main Street. On Lower Main Street. And oh, yeah, that's that's so this little. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm stuttering. <laughs> um, <laughs> one and a half spots on Lower Main Street and to include the sidewalk in between limit in between limited transportation of alcoholic beverages only. Second. And Natasha? Um, yes. Uh, Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Um, Oops. Azad Barat Incorporated, DBA India House, 45 State Street, three parking spots on State Street for 18 people, same as last year. Same as it ever was. Um, is anyone, is that going through anyone else's head? Um, <laughs> How many things are going through my head, Helen? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hadn't entered, but it will now. Thank you. Yeah, now it's yes. there. Now it's there. Here we're. Um, I make a motion to approve the temporary extension of premises for Azad Barat Inc. DBA India House, as shown on plan on file with the License Commission, to include three parking spots on State Street directly in front of the restaurant for 18 patrons and to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Very limited DBA Fitzwillies 23 Main Street. This is for two parking spots with six tables and 24 chairs, same as last year with maybe some jazzing it up per door. Sounds good to me. I... They're not doing the parking lot this year. Yeah. Okay. Oh, right. Okay. Um, uh, I move to approve the temporary extension of premises for our very limited DBA Fitzwillies Toasted Owl as shown on the plan on file with the License Commission to include two parking spots on Lower Main Street for six tables and 24 chairs and to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Okay, we're getting there. Next, Sant Hari Singh Incorporated, DBA Indi India Palace. This is their first year for outdoor dining. Do we have anybody here, Annie? No, we don't. I saw him log in. Yep. Um, I worry that he didn't know that we maybe went into executive session and- Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so he was planning on being on the sidewalk, right? No, he, this is his first year that he wants to be in the street. Okay. And um, did, is that a guarantee from the DPW for whoever wants it or? Um, so Majestic, the Majestic isn't going out this year. So he would be taking the spots actually they'd be like shifted up one um so he would be taking uh like two spots in front of india palace leaving one spot open before you get to strong out and is so right so now right now it's on my plans for the DPW um, pending the mayor's approval. I don't see her not approving it, but I, but ultimately it's all her call. Yep. So um, yeah, and the, the DPW is planning on dropping the barriers um, on the 11th. As long as we get a shipment of the sponges that are in <laughs> There's sponges that go in the bottom of the planters. There's three in each. And apparently they disintegrated at the DPW over the winter. So we had, and we didn't know that until just a few days ago. So I had to order about 600 of them and they're, they come from Canada. Um, so the order was placed today. Hopefully we'll get them by Tuesday. If we don't, we're going to have to push it back maybe to, to Wednesday or Thursday of next week. Mm -hmm. um, 
but that's neither here nor there, I guess. Okay. Um, what what do we think of moving forward this without him present? I'm a little apprehensive about it because um, it's their first year out and there's just the conversation to be had about containing the space and everything else. But on the other hand, this has been a really long meeting with an unusual start with executive session. Um, what do you yeah, think? Isn't it, um, I mean, like all of this is going to be looked at by the building department. And yep. I mean, is there any more conversation or do they just get an approval and set up and, and go? I mean, uh, it is a long standing business. Yeah, um, I know they're new to the outdoors, um, but I, I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, Annie could also reiterate the containment conversation in an email. Right. Are you, how do you feel about that, Annie? I can absolutely do that. Okay. And then I don't every, with that. Everyone needs to have the build, building department walk by and just check and make sure everything looks okay. Yep. Yeah. I don't want to hold them up because of how this meeting's been. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Um, right. I'm going for it then. I'm gonna make a motion to approve the temporary extension of premises for, San, that looks wrong. Sant Hari Singh? Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, DBA India Palace as shown on the plan on file with the license commission to include two parking spots on Lower Main Street for six tables and 24 chairs and to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only. Second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right, next up we have Notch 8 Incorporated, DBA Union Station, Platform Bar, Tunnel Bar, The Deck, 125A Pleasant Street. Um, this is for 720 square feet in three parking spots on Strong Avenue for nine tables and 36 seats. It's the same thing. He's actually not going out. Uh, he's going out um in May like mid-May um because he's not he won't utilize the area until then and we don't want the parking spot sitting um yeah. mm -hmm. okay that's reasonable we have um, a motion yeah move to approve the temporary extension of premises for notch eight inc dba tunnel bar as shown on pl the plan on file with the license commission to include three parking spots on strong avenue totaling 720 square feet for nine tables and 36 seats and to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcohol beverages only second natasha yes helen yes and jennifer yes Next up, we have Rias Baixas, LLC, DBA Homestead, 7 Strong Avenue. This is for two and a half parking spots on Strong Ave with five tables and 24 chairs and a space in front of the restaurant for Summer on Strong with 10 tables and 42 chairs. Same as last year. Uh, so the street, so actually not last year, but the year prior he went out into parking spots before summer on strong mm -hmm. um, last year he didn't he didn't have the staff um so this year he is going out in parking spots before summer on strong so okay. he's already done it um and he's heavily involved in the summer on strong crew so yep. yeah yep. okay i have faith in him doing it right mm -hmm. so move to approve the temporary extension of prem premises for reus Boshas LS LLC DBA Homestead as shown on plan, the plan on file with the license commission to include five tables and 24 seats and two and a half parking spots on Strong Ave and to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only. Second. Tasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Okay, we also need the summer on strong motion. Right. 
um, is that um, on the spreadsheet, um, the summer on strong, his is it's under oh, yellow. Is it yellow? It's, green. Oh, it's like teal. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, sorry, I just have to scroll back and forth between. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. I make a motion to improve the uh, improve, approve the temporary extension of premises for Rias Bosch's LLC DBA homestead is shown on the plan on file with the license commission for the purposes of summer on strong with 10 tables and 42 chairs to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only from May 30th, 2023 through September 5th, 2023. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Okay, Lilo Incorporated, DBA Eastside Grill, 19 Strong Avenue, 754 square feet in Strong Ave in front of the restaurant for Summer on Strong. Yes, so this is another Summer on Strong application. Um, the rest of them, Local Burger, Progression, and... Moshi Moshi will be on the May agenda. Okay. Okay. So they're essentially doing the same thing this year. They're actually shortening it. Um, so it won't start. Oh my God, when did it start last year? Like be get like without Memorial Day. No, it was like May 10th or something, because they wanted to get Mother's Day in there and graduation, I think. So oh, okay. um so this year it's starting on the 30th, which is the Tuesday after Memorial Day weekend. And it will run, instead of running through Columbus Day, it will run through Labor Day and then it will come up. That's good. All right, uh, make a motion to approve the temporary extension of premises for Lilo Inc. DBA Eastside Grill as shown on the plan on file with the license commission for the purposes of Summer on Strong to include 754 square feet and the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of al alcoholic beverages only from May 30th, 2023 through September 5th, 2023. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. All right. Next batch, applications for temporary outdoor dining extension of premises into private parking lots. And uh, we will take these one at a time also. One Bridge Street Incorporated DBA Spoleto Restaurant, one Bridge Street. This is for the adjacent parking lot as they did last year. Yep, same thing. All right, uh, I'll make a motion to approve. A temporary extension of premises for One Bridge Street, Inc. DBA Spoleto, as shown on the plan on file with the license commission to include adjacent private parking lot through November 15th, 2023. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. And Rias Bashas LLC DBA Homestead, 7 Strong Avenue. This is approximately 600 square feet on the back patio with seven tables and 24 chairs. Yeah, so this is a this is a private, his private patio that's included in his lease, and he's done it. He's done yeah. it the past couple of years. Yeah. All right. So I move to approve the temporary extension of premises for Rias Bosch's LLC DBA homestead as shown on the plan on file with the license commission to include the 600 square foot back patio with seven tables and 26 chairs through November 15th, 2023. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Next, we have Sang Tawan Incorporated DBA Tai Tai at 84 Pleasant Street. This is for seven tables with 24 chairs in the private alley and two tables in front. And this is also what they did last year. I move to approve the temporary extension of premises for Sang Tawan, Sang Tawan Inc. DBA Tai Tai as shown on the plan on file with the license commission to include the abutting private parking lot with seven tables and 24 chairs and two tables on the sidewalk 
through November 15th, 2023, and to include the sidewalk in between limited to transportation of alcoholic beverages only. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. Notch 8 incorporated DBA Union Station platform bar, tunnel bar, the deck, 125A Pleasant Street, 4,000 square feet, 42 tables, 168 seats, and a 40 by 80 tent in front of the Union Station, which I believe is what they did last year. Correct. Yep. All right. Uh, make a motion to approve the temporary extension of premises for Notch 8 Inc. DBA Union Station platform bar. The deck as shown on the plan on file with the License Commission to include 4,000 square feet of the abutting parking lot for an additional additional 168 seats through November 15th, 2023. Second. Natasha? Yes. Helen? <clears throat> and Jennifer? Yes. Great. All right, Helen, thank you for shouldering all those motions. <laughs> that was a lot. Thanks for writing them out, Annie. Okay. <laughs> I think yeah. we have a hand up, Natasha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, item 17, update on the prospective tenant and plans for transfer of the license, if necessary, for the annual all-alcohol restaurant license held by 2123 Center Street, LLC. And hello, Eric. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, do we have an update for this one? Um, we do. This is regarding uh, 2123 Center Street in the basement. So there was a discussion at the last meeting related to a possible tenant who was looking to take over the space mm -hmm. um, and the license. And if that was not going to happen, that we were looking at um, reopening as we've uh, we were either either way um, taking a building permit out for renovations, which has happened. Um, the building permit was issued somewhere the last week of February, I believe. Um, and Aldenville Construction is, has commenced, not moving as fast as we had hoped that they've commenced. So the update there is the discussions are still ongoing. I think you're aware of a conversation that my attorney has had with Attorney Seawall just regarding trying to figure out a blanket approach to all of these. So it's not consuming of the commission's time. And I'm, I'm sorry about what transpired today in terms of delaying this meeting because of that session. Okay. Appreciating everybody's time. Yep, not a problem. Um, and then for, um, we also have you for item 18, update on the calendar bookings for the annual all alcohol restaurant license held by the Calvin Theater Corporation. Yes, so there have been excellent discussions um, related to that, um, that license and that establishment, which, um, which is moving forward in a decent manner. So um, the the goal there is to have a full schedule that's going to be announced. It just may not be done um, under our umbrella, but with someone else's um, someone else taking that over, which is um, I think going to be very positive in terms of the activity. Okay, very good. I appreciate the updates, and um, we'll see you for the next ones. Yes. Great. Is there any other information I can provide you, or you? Nope, I think that is it. Helen and Jennifer, did you need anything else? Uh, no, I don't. Thank you. Great. And again, I'm sorry for you know all of the time that this has caused the commission. It's okay. It, it, it happens. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Item 19, request to rescind the previously approved short-term liquor license issued to the Ireland Forever Foundation for the Ireland Forever Festival on June 3rd, 2023. This is, I know so much work went into putting that all together. Um, I see no reason not to approve this. I, yeah. That's, rescind it. Yeah, to yeah, and approve yes. the rescission. <laughs> Would somebody like to make a motion? I'll move to rescind the previously approved short-term liquor license issued to the Ireland Forever Foundation for the Ireland Forever Festival on June 3rd, 2023. Second. Uh, Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. 
Item 20, to consider temporarily, temporarily delegating to the clerk, to the commission, the authority to extend the premises covered by a common victuallers license for the purpose of facilitating outdoor dining and to execute such extension of premises on behalf of a majority of the license commission. So we have done this before. Um, Jennifer, we did this in the past just so that we didn't have to bring all this to every meeting if it was just something simple and straightforward for a common vic. Yep, Annie, understood. Did you, yeah, you want to add? Just so do, these are um, applications that we get for non liquor, temporary um, outdoor dining, like familiars has one noodles actually isn't going out this year, but they they've had one in the past um, and they don't have liquor licenses. So it just is allowing me to say okay or no or without having to have a meeting or a special meeting on it. Oh, sure, and great. And you need us to vote on this? Uh, yes. Okay. And can someone make a motion? I uh, move to delegate the clerk of the commission the authority to extend the premises covered by common victual or licenses for the purpose of facilitating outdoor dining and to execute such extension of premises on behalf of a majority of the license commission. Second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? Yes. And Jennifer? Yes. We're getting there. Item 21, discussion of hybrid versus remote meetings after the passage of extension for allowing remote and hybrid meetings through March 31st, 2025. Nice. Yeah, so we have the option now to stay remote or go hybrid or whatever you all prefer. And we have to choose one or the other. Can it be fluid and go back and forth as long as it's posted appropriately? Yeah, I don't think it matters. Um, you can you can do it I, whatever you whatever you choose. You have the option to do either or through March 2025. <clears throat> I'm always happy to meet in person. I have, but I also have a very flexible work schedule. So it's easy for me to say that. So I will defer to the rest of you on how you would prefer to move forward. Um, yeah, if I can make it there, it's nice to be in person. <laughs> um, but so I guess I'm confused about how, what we say, like if we're doing this fluid thing, then is it sort of, I mean, what is it to you, Annie, if we say, like, it seems like there'd be a point at which we decide if that month it's going to be hybrid or remote. Because I know previously we had that discussion about like at least two commissioners have to be in person. And right none of that really applicable now, but we just no. say, oh, we may choose to show up there this month. No, if you were, if we were to do a hybrid meeting, um, a forum of the commission would need to be physically present. Okay, that's still the case. With yeah. This. And then is and that- I, would, I probably should know only because when I uh, publish legal notices for public hearings, I have to put, either where the meeting's being held or if it's over Zoom, I need to include the Zoom information in the legal notice. So I need to know what, when and where the meeting's gonna be. Right, so, and it seems like you'd have to, it'd be some kind of wording like you have the option to appear in person at this date, uh, at this location or on Zoom. Cause it sounds like what we're saying is we're always gonna have the Zoom option. It's just a matter of some of us wanna meet in person, right? Is that right. what we're talking about? Right, actually, yeah, I guess that's a good point because we've, actually, I think it was the meeting that you weren't at recently that the the hybrid rules were adopted. And I think it's something, there was a provision in there that said um, applicants can appear in person or remote. Yeah, I remember having that discussion way back, yeah. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts, Jennifer? I guess. Oh, um, 
Yeah, completely on the fence. Um, I mean, for scheduling, going on Zoom, you know, is very convenient. Yeah. I think, I mean, I also have work flexibility, but then conflicts do come up. Yeah. And I think, can you correct me if I'm wrong, Annie, but we're locking in the commissioners um, sort of Zoom versus in person, and this doesn't impact um, participants. Do you know what I mean? Or does this impact? Correct. Are we making a decision for what's convenient or what's best for everyone or what works best for the commission? Well, in, in the um, provisions that were adopted at, at one of our most recent meetings, um applicants who are on the agenda have the ability to show up in person or they have the option of showing up in person or over zoom right i apologize Annie. i know you did just say that so the feedback that i received um from folks you know was that they they seemed glad i mean we had somebody you know i mean o'brien from maine was able to attend a, a hearing that he would have missed and folks i don't know someone attended a basketball game during our um, so I like that we're accessible. Um, so I, and I haven't heard feedback on the contrary. I think with the exception of Annie doing the lottery, I thought that was the only kind of squirmy moment where we should have been in person. Um, if I had to vote based on feedback that I've received or observations I've made during our meetings, I would say that that Zoom makes the commission the most accessible to to people in the community. Well, hybrid would still allow, hybrid would require that, right, Annie? So even if two of the commissioners were present and you, so if it were in-person refers just to us. So it will always forevermore. I, I thought I just asked Annie that question and it wasn't. No. Oh, oh, I think it's sorry. just late in the day and I'm misunderstanding. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I was trying to ask. So, I might have misunderstood it too. I'm sorry. I maybe I did too. So if you're on if an application is on the agenda, that applicant has the option of going in person or on Zoom. So they can decide what's best for them. Mm -hmm. So we're just making a decision based on what's best for the commissioners. I mean, right. right. Because the applicants yeah. or whoever would still have the option to do either. Correct. Yeah. Right. And that, yeah. So even though I know I'm leaning, I mean, when you put it that way, it really is. It's like, oh, we're making the decision. Should we make it more difficult for us <laughs> or not? And and of course, I don't know if there's any applicants who are like, oh, I'd much rather be there in person. Probably very few. Yeah. Um, yeah, so now, I mean, when you phrase it that way, I'm leaning towards saying we should just keep it simple and keep it remote. And I never need to be in the room with another human being again as long as well, well, my concern, my <laughs> concern is that we would commit to meeting in person and then uh, and folks and then don't and then adjust we're flying, their schedule. wheels trying to get there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can see two of you sitting in the room and everyone else being on Zoom. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it would be. And then it's the technical setup. And then, yeah, you have to deal with that, Annie. And, you know. I just want to use that park for free for an hour placard that I get from my car. <laughs> I want to have some benefit to that. <laughs> but it's not an hour, back. it's just for the meeting, right, <laughs> Annie? It's technically just the yeah. yes, it's just for the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> right, just for the meeting. <laughs> um, so it sounds like everybody's preference is to leave things as they are. Yeah, I guess so. Moving I forward. Think so. Annie, you're cool with that? I'm sorry. Can you say that again? <laughs> so it sounds like the preference is to leave things remote. Same yeah. as it is. Okay. I'm I'm cool with that, yes. All right. Thank you. We don't need to vote on this, right? No. Okay. No. Um, before we go to approval of minutes, um, I just want to, Peter is here and you have been for the whole meeting. I commend you for that. Um, but I'm not sure why you're here because we don't have you on our agenda. Annie, can you unmute Peter so we can find out 
Just take a quick minute to find out what's up. Can you hear me now? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I applied yesterday for a, a permit for the three spaces out front. And um, it was for um, a, a raised um, platform. Someone had done that on, um, on Market Street last year in front of the shared workspace. Yep, Peter Irvine did that for his law office. And I really liked it a lot. And also the town my mother lives in, in Canada, um, the whole town is like that. Um, yeah. Pretty, but um, well, um, I guess I just wanted to ask um, what I would do since it's, it, would I just wait for the following meeting on? Um, yeah. Make, make, so, so, so Peter, you don't have a liquor license. Mm -hmm. So I don't sell liquor. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, so you don't need approval from the license commission. Oh. You, you need oh. approval from the mayor. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, I thought for some reason, I didn't realize that was um, what you guys were, that it was just people who had alcohol. It was, yes, the license commission is just uh, alcohol for outdoor yeah. dining. Well, it was very entertaining otherwise. Thank you. I <laughs> <laughs> you fulfilled um, your citizenship of Northampton by attending this two hour license commission meeting, <laughs> the first hour of which was executive session. So I commend you for that. Well, well, well thank you very much then. Okay, <laughs> have a good night. <laughs> Bye. Um, okay, item 22, approval of minutes. Is there a motion to approve February 14th, 2023 and March 1st, 2023? Uh, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah, because... <laughs> I Alan's think, done talking. Oh, wait, sorry. Oh, okay. no, I have to. No. The March 1st meeting, Helen was not at. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so do I, can I move this? Yep. To approve the minutes from January 14th, 2023, and March 1st, 2023? We could do February 14th, 2023. <laughs> you said January. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I can't talk anymore. I mean, I think we're all extremely this, was, this was your big moment, Jennifer. I, know. <laughs> I dropped it. I dropped it. Oh my gosh. Sorry. Um, you but great. take two. It's the plunge, Helen. You know, if I hadn't plunged for you sure folks. You still got brain freeze. I understand. I, I'm still frozen. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, so I move for approval the minutes from February 14th, 2023 and March 1st of 2023. I will second. And Natasha? Yes. Helen? I abstain. Is this what I do? Okay, abstain. And Jennifer? Yes. Perfect. 23, new business. Woohoo. So I had something I wanted to, which, Danny, do you want to go first? Uh, no. Okay. I just wanted to ask Annie to retroactively get the outdoor entertainment uh, floor plan from applicants prior to when we uh, introduced the new application. So that would mean asking Bombex to provide us with that information. I think that uh, venue is particularly important for us to have a, a real understanding of where they're putting these people and how many people they intend to have outdoors. Um, Cause we don't have that information and we've, we've required it of others. The other outdoor entertainment spaces, um, JJ slash Miss Flo's Diner, that I'm a little less concerned about because it's contained under the pavilion, which I think we have a plan for on file. Would we have that, Annie? Yeah, we would have a floor plan because he permanently extended his premise. Yep. yep. So that could be inserted into the file as the floor plan for outdoor. Um, I can't think of any place else. I mean, we have Summer on Strong, which is the same thing. We already have a plan for that. That could be, that could stand in the file. Um, I can't think of any place else. So really just Bombix. Does that make sense to you guys to do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, and thank you for staying ahead of this because I've expected it to come back for additional discussion. So thank you for staying on top of it. So yes, yeah, we should I, have that. 
I was reminded of it driving by last week and they had a, um, you know, all of Pine Street was full of cars and the Great Wall was full of cars and they had signage like every six feet having people park at the Elks Lodge. And it's, I just sort of like did the math and thought, gosh, that's an awful lot of people. <laughs> Where are they all gonna go outside? Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Annie, you had something, unless this is the 19th hour in your toast. Can we, yeah, can we do it? I, I, it was just maybe entertaining a different day for meetings, but I just, I would rather not do it today. That's totally fine. All right, then unless there's anything else, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Um, <laughs> Natasha. Yes. Helen. Yes. And Jennifer. Yes. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I know that was uh, 